Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am down at Ralph's Industrial Sewing Machine Warehouse. Emporium. <laughs> I want to say Emporium. <laughs> and I am here with the lovely Jack. Are you the owner? No, I'm Executive Vice President of Ralph's Industrial Sewing and I'm an engineer. And, and an engineer. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. um, he is here to answer all of the questions you guys always have for me about my lovely King Max machine. And we will kind of walk around and show you a cylinder arm because I'm very much interested in purchasing one. <laughs> and he'll kind of go over all of the things that are on that machine for us so we can get a better understanding of everything. All right, so let's, Jack, let's start out with my machine Your here. machine, okay. Yeah. Your machine is the GC0302 King Max. Mm -hmm. It is a drop feed walking foot. Meaning the needle goes up and down, that's drop. Right. And top and bottom feed. Sometimes just call the top and bottom feed machine. Okay. It's a very good machine and very versatile machine because yeah. it can, first of all, it's a large bob and side load. So you can take thread all the way up to 138 if you want, which yep. is pretty heavy stuff. Oh, that's heavy. Yes. Okay. The other thing about this machine that is nice is you can go from heavy to light or light only or heavy only. And yeah. it doesn't cause you problems. And by uh -huh. the needle going straight up and down, instead of walking, like some of the other machines we'll see later, it gives you the ability to do very tight corners and curves. When uh -huh. you're doing leather work, imagine like a cowboy boot, where you gotta do that fancy stitching, the needle's yeah. not fighting you. You can pull right. it, it'll move. It'll do a good job for you. And it takes a standard hip industrial sewing machine needle, which uh, I'm talking about a walking foot, which is the 135X, 17 which gives you the ability to jump anywhere from about a size 9 all the way up to about a 26. Uh -huh. so I like to sew with an 18. Okay. Yeah that's usually the... My suggestion would be if you're going to do your leather and you do yeah. 69 yeah, is you use up. a 20 or a 21. Yeah uh, I've it, done I've done a 20 before when I do leather mm -hmm. but for yeah for what I do the 18 was working good okay. but maybe I'll try the 20. Well the idea is you want a 50 percent opening in the eye as Why the thread that? comes through because the thread goes through 36 times before it forms a stitch. Oh. So what happens as it's doing that, it's getting hot. And if it's tight, let's say you got that 18 and you stop the machine and say, I broke the thread. No, you melted the thread. <gasps> My thread breaks. That's what it is. It's not breaking, it's melting. <laughs> okay. So if you get that opened okay. up a little bit, it'll okay. go through and it won't do that. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good to know. <laughs> all good things, all good things. Um, I'll give you a chart later to show you all oh, the needle that, sizes that would for the be type amazing. of thread. Okay? That would be amazing. <laughs> Um, so I always have people asking, well, what's your King Max equivalent to? This is the same machine as the Juki DU1181. Mm -hmm. Used to be the old brother 797. Okay. The old, um, what was it? Mitsubishi DY, DY377, the, uh, was it the MY337 Chandler? Okay. Uh, the Conso. Oh, <laughs> no, no, that's 206. That's Vicky's the needle behind feed the camera to telling two, him to things. 205. <laughs> 205. 205. <laughs> yeah. So the machine has been around for quite a while. Yeah. In other words, the feet are the same, the uh -huh. bobbins, bobbin cases, uh -huh. the needles, it's all the same. Okay? okay. And then you need special attachments for them, they're going to be the same. You know? Okay. So it's not anything that's oddball. Okay. Okay. So, so this one's just a little bit different than my machine at home. As you guys can see, it's got the bobbin winder on top here now instead of on the side. Um, what's, is there an advantage to that or it just, it's, whoever's it's just made, changed yeah, they, they do cast over the years. There. And it's, it's funny because this was actually something that Singer came up with in the 60s, oh. early in the late 50s, really? uh, on some of their industrial machines. And okay. they did them that way. Then they went back to, we'll leave it over here and put the belt over here. Then mm -hmm. when OSHA came along, they had a lot of things with requirements about this being exposed. Oh, so that changed. Now okay. that, I don't know what they're going back to now. But I see they're all doing this again. So. Huh, okay. okay. This one's a little prettier than mine. It's got the gray. The... <laughs> <laughs> Since yours is yours a light gray on there? Yeah. Uh, it's all the same color. Well, yeah. I, I think mine's yeah. just all the so same color. The, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Those are all good. So mm -hmm. I always tell people that I love my machine because I can sew, I can sew cotton, I can sew vinyl, I can sew leather, um, and it does great with all of those things. Correct. Um, if people wanted to go one step up, mm -hmm. they were just doing leather or mm -hmm. doing heavier materials, what would be the next step up from this? Well, 
you then go to what's called the needle feed walking foot. Okay. Sure. And that's what you and I were talking about, which would be the King Max, which would be the, um, the 1541. Okay. Or it'd be the Juki 1541, the DU, DNU 15, uh, DU 15, DNU 1541. Uh-huh. Or the Conso 206 RB, <laughs> as okay. you said before. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The thing is, that's where the needle walks, the feet walk, and the feed dogs walk. Called so unis three different things. Three, things three different moving. things are moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. We call it Juki's terminology is called unison feed. Unison if you're feed, talking okay. in singer terminology, it's an alternating presser foot, a compound feed with alternating presser foot. Okay. 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 <laughs> Means the same thing. Means all three things are moving. Okay. okay? Now okay. that's a more powerful in a sense because everything is pulling together. So uh -huh. it's up heavier. It does that. The negative part about it is you can't really do light. And you don't want yeah. to do heavy and light together because it will give you ripples and all that. Right. And the other thing is, it, you'll it'll do whatever you want, making tight curves, but you're going to have to fight it because the needle says, "I'm going forward." I don't care. Which what is why doing. I love mm -hmm. this machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another question. Mm -hmm. So people are always asking me um, when they're sewing on this machine, um, the pressure from the feed yep. dogs and the foot are leaving marks, marks. on their material. And I don't even know how to do this on mine. Okay. Uh, how do you lessen that pressure on this machine? There's two things you can do. Yeah. You can actually take the pressure off of here by turning this knob. There's a spring that comes down here and puts the pressure down. Uh -huh. And you can take it off. A. B, you can do another thing. You could change the walk, which is back here, this nut. You unscrew this a little bit and slide this up, this little protractor <gasps> up there and tighten it down. It'll make it walk high. Or walk oh, kind of like see, that that's doing. what I've been needing to know. <laughs> and then, if that's still a problem, okay, you get yourself one extra set of feet, uh -huh. and you take them and you have them. and you sand them. Yeah, mm -hmm. take them on that yeah. grinder. Give them. You want to give yeah. them about twenty years worth of wear in about a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Put it back on and set. Okay, because I'm always scared to mess with these on my machine. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to do something and not try be able. First. I'm going to try that. Mm -hmm. And all it is is this nut here, and you should have in the drawer a wrench. Okay. You loosen it. Here, let's show. You want to see that beautiful little I want to see. I want to see the nut okay. we're talking about here. It's this nut right here. Mm -hmm. Can you see it where my finger is? Yep. Okay. You, you loosen this. Okay. You slide this whole bracket up. As you see, it's like a little protractor. Yep. Right? You slide it up where you want, tighten it back down. Uh -huh. And what it does, it changes the walk to high or to low. And I'll show you that on the drop feed walking foot, okay. or needle feed walking foot, where you can adjust it on the top. Because oh, it's easier to do than going taking the wrench off and doing that it. That is fabulous because mm -hmm. I have been needing to figure that out. Yes, and that will do it for you. That'll also make it, if you're walking and you're, let's say you have some soft leather that's walking too yeah. high and you're pound, 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 pound. You take that and you'll go, Keep your stitch length the same, but won't pound. Or you need to get it up to where it has to climb. Like, yep. like you're doing your handles. Mm -hmm. You want it up there so things go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Most people find a sweet spot and they don't even know about it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It. That's it. Yeah. I think I'm going to put mine up a tiny bit and mm -hmm. see if that helps. Yeah, see if it does. Um, are there any other tips and tricks for this machine and adjusting things that you would? This machine is very simple, so it's like Yeah, the, I mean, the, I feel like it's very simple. The, the I, threading is simple. Uh -huh. Bobbin, bobbin case is yeah. real simple. There's not a lot with this machine no. that really needs to be adjusted. I sit right. down at a domestic machine and I'm like, ha, ah, right, what am right. I doing? <laughs> Even looking at I'm the threading, it's so simplicity. simple here, you know? Yep, it yeah. is, it is. It's okay. very good. And the thing is, it's a self-oiling machine, which is nice, except uh -huh. for the few external parts. Right. And that's the only thing you want to make so sure. So we oil the little cups yep. here. One, and this in here? Yep. And you that's what I do. And then you might put a drop of Right oil. here. Yep. There you go. That's right what there. I do. Okay, and I'll show you two And other somebody times. told me, no, you're not supposed to no. oil it. And I'm yes. like, no, 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 I no, think no. you are. And then right here, these two spots. Oh, I don't do that. Well, Vicky, can you see them? Oh, One, I don't two. even see yeah, those. That's where you'll hear, sometimes you hear it starts to end going, ee, 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 ee. Uh -huh. that's it. You put it in there, <gasps> it'll stop that. And all of a sudden it gets quiet and it does another thing. Got it run smooth. Oh, I just recently did a video. I changed my oil. And I oiled my parts, and yeah, somebody said you're not supposed to oil King Max, and I'm like, I'm why? Yeah. Why are those there? They're there for anything okay. exter external exposed shafts. Yeah. And linkages are always to be oiled. Okay. Any machine. Okay. Because they're moving parts. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is my machine. Mm -hmm. 
and let's go we're gonna walk over we can just turn it off for a minute but let's go walk we're gonna walk over to cylinder arms over here and we're gonna discuss some things about those okay all right <laughs> okay so we moved over here by these fabulous cylinder arm machines um I'm always getting the question, why didn't you buy a cylinder arm or should I buy a cylinder arm compared to a flatbed? Knowing now what I know versus three years ago when I bought my machine, um, <laughs> Vicky's telling me I need both of them, but I know now a cylinder arm would be amazing. <laughs> and I'm very much debating getting one of these. Um, just throughout my experience of bag making, needing to do all of those drop-in linings. And when I'm top stitching, this, I mean, would be life-changing. Um, so we are going to talk about a couple of different models of the King Max cylinder arms. And he can kind of tell us what they're equivalent to in other brands, mm -hmm. but um, I love my King Max, so. Here we go. All right, tell us about this one, Mr. This, Jack. Okay, this is the King Max uh, GT uh, 1341. Okay. Now this is a needle feed walking foot. That means, other like, other than the machine you just saw a minute uh -huh. ago, this one the needle is going to walk along with the feet and the feed dog. So three things. So, that you and that's some... like my my other machine, right? No. 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 This, this your your machine needle goes straight up and down. If you look from the side here, I'm going to turn this. You want to get closer a little bit. So if you look from the side uh -huh. here, and you'll see the needle. Watch the needles coming back. Oh, so yeah. So three things. This is called unison feeding. Okay? okay. Okay. So this is a little bit heavier way of going. Mm -hmm. It's a higher feed. It's also got a very high lift on this machine. So oh, now you've wow. got a machine. Look at that. Look how yeah. much space you got there. Three quarters of an inch right there. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's got. It's a large bobbin. Yeah. Which is also the same as yours. It's, it's the same. One. So my bobbins would work in both machines. Correct. So this is the same size as right. my other machine, which M is great. M-style bobbin. Now, this is a top load. Now, a top load is going to be heavier machine because instead of driving the needle into the bobbin case, you're driving it by the bobbin case. So by doing that, uh -huh. you can go heavier. You can take this thread all the way up to two, 207. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Because the worst thing you do on this, you break the needle, uh -huh. you knock it out of timing, you hit the button, Hold it, turn it back in reverse, and pops back it in pops the timing. In. Then you go thread it up again, put in a needle in, and go. You know, okay. where in yours, you know, you can yeah. smash the bottom case, uh -huh. right? You know. Um. So this has this fabulous dial on top. Right. Explain that to us. This is the adjustable walk that I was talking about over there before, and I said you can undo the nut and do that. This one does it automatically. Yeah. You watch. You can turn the foot. I'll get it to where you can see it here. Let's get that. See how it oh, moves? Do you see it? Do you see this part's moving up mm -hmm. and down? So, you know, when I sew bags and I need something to lift up my foot to go over a hump, this eliminates that. You just pull it up automatically and it'll move over that extra material. Why right your, right is your sewing? And the yeah. thing that's nice about it is, is like walking feet don't want to climb. No, and they don't want to come don't. off. So they that's don't. why if you got this knob, you keep sawing and not have them do this. I proper. always have to protect it yes. when it's coming up and protect Correct. it when it's coming back down. Because the toe is stuck here and going, yep. nah, 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 yep. and it won't move. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that solves that issue, which is. Correct. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> I wish my other machine had that feature <laughs> exactly. on it. Yep. That is really nice. Um, and then the other options when you do a cylinder arm is you can get a, what's it called? Well, a, it, well, it's called. It's called an attachment. An attachment. It's kind of like you see it over here on this. Okay, side. let's look at this. And you can have the table can be different. Yeah, like this one over here, which is called a belly cut. Oh, okay. Where belly cut. Yeah, we just cut that out, and then we can get attachment for you. Yeah. So that way, if you're doing a big bag, it has to hang yeah, to the floor. Yeah, it can hang all the way down there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. So you you've got heavier stuff to work with and ability to do it and handle it more. Right. We can make it more versatile. Too. Yeah, and those are all, that's all customizable, right? Yeah, like correct. when you come purchase, you can say, I want a belly cut, mm -hmm. I want the table, yeah. we'll um, I want my machine pink. Speed no, reducer. no. Speed <laughs> oh, speed reducer. Speed reducer. Now, this one yeah. has a speed reducer on it. And the idea of this is we can set this to where that machine will go tick, tick, uh -huh. tick, tick, because that is 
It's like going onto your 10 speed bike and you go through that big sprocket in the front and the little one, and all of a sudden you're going like, oh uh -huh. man, you know, uh -huh. that's what you're doing here. Okay. So it makes it somebody like me who can't sew, and I look pretty good when I can sit here and go. Little bit by little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Oh, it even sounds nice. Doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> it gives a nice stitch, too. Yeah, it does. It looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yes. And still you have the servo um, motor so you can change the speed up and down. Right. But you gotta, what it does, it doubles the torque. So it also, you can have a hunk of leather, uh -huh. put that thing on there and just go. Yeah. Right through it. Right through it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the one you suggest I get, correct? Mm -hmm. This correct. is the model. So it's GC1341. GGT1341. Is that GC on GC. Oh, there's a GC on that. Okay. I'm all out. <laughs> so that's good. I'm glad you GC, saw it. GC1341 mm -hmm. um, would be the model that he would recommend for me. Let's look at a couple of different ones. Well, here, let's look at this. Oh, okay. This let's look at this one. This is, uh, this is the PF. Uh, Vicky's three, doing three, amazing five. behind the camera. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. <laughs> this is a small bobbin. It's a, a side load. Instead of that one's a top load. Okay. Okay. This one's a leather machine also, but it, what it does, it's got what they call a vibrating plate. So when I work this one, yeah. when I, and I'm gonna get my foot in here so I can get this loose in here. So when this one goes, if you watch the plate vibrates. So let's say you were putting a binder on there, put a very fine leather binder, like you're doing fine Italian shoes or whatever. Yeah. And it'll do that real fine binding without messing up anything on there because the binding and the binder are moving uh, sequenced actually with the needle and uh -huh, the feet. Uh -huh. Now this is a good machine too. It doesn't have the lift of the uh, Yeah, other the, the foot doesn't right. lift as high. No. And it doesn't have the size of bottom. Right. And uh, when you go to get special attachments, they can be more expensive. Because okay. that's it. It does have the adjustable lock, but it would be here. Again, like your machine has. Oh, okay. See? Yep. Oh, I'm so glad you told me that. <laughs> I'm so excited to go home and change that on my machine. Okay. <laughs> What other machine do you want to show us? All that right, would I want be to show helpful? you. I could show you that one, which would be a roller foot, but I don't think you need that. No. One. Okay. Let's look at a the one that you say people are questioning about, which uh -huh. would be like the fifteen forty one. That's uh -huh. the needle. Oh, needle let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're over here at another King Max, and this is GC fifteen forty one S, which is equivalent to the Juki fifteen forty one S. Um, so that's the machine that a lot of people get and they're always asking me why don't I have that one um it's more heavy duty it's more heavy duty more heavy it's duty. not as ver versatile for the stuff you want to do right so mm -hmm. you can't really sew linings on this it doesn't it yeah. doesn't go the same right no, it's, okay. this is a needle feed walking foot okay just like I showed you on that cylinder machine mm -hmm. um it's uh, it's got a nice lift on it I mean it goes up there 16 oh, yeah. millimeters but yeah. It, and it's got the same M bobbin side load, uses the same needles. Okay. But it is a heavier feeding machine. Mm -hmm. So as far as doing real tight, hard stuff, it's not going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to fight it. It'll do it. Yeah. Uh, or if you want to go from heavy to light or light, it's not going to want to do that well. You know? Okay. Okay. It's a good machine. But... It's a good machine if you're more into heavier materials. Right. Mm -hmm. And it does have that amazing knob. I wish my There's machine had up top. That's your walk. Yeah, right there. look, that is oh, that is so amazing to me. <laughs> look at that. Let me get the hand real so you can really see it. Yeah, That's watch. It. Ready? This. We'll get her up. That's <laughs> so nice. That's so nice. <laughs> so if somebody was really wanting to get into leather and you and you'll see this a lot in places where they'll do like upholstery. Upholstery. upholstery shops. Okay. You get the guy who's doing cars or doing furniture or whatever like uh -huh. that. They'll run this a lot. They'll run. We have a uh, console over here. We have the King Max 206. Same thing. Here's a console. So you'll see those all the time. And they're the same needle feed, washing foot. Okay. This is an old standard workhorse of the industry. Okay. And uh, and they just run. You know, uh -huh. Doing that 57 Chevy, and then they go into the, you know, they run them day and night. Yeah, and then they're good machines, you know. Uh huh. Um, I always laugh because I had a guy come in one time and he tells me, the weld foot just doesn't work. I don't know what's the matter with the machine. Well, he'd been using a quarter inch weld foot for like 27 years and he'd worn it down to where oh. there's like no groove anymore. <laughs> they were like, well. I go, why don't you get another foot? They'll run like a dream again. <laughs> oh, that's great. Because <laughs> the, the great thing about industrial machines mm -hmm. is that 
they're gonna last forever. Mm -hmm. They're built to just run and run and run. That's right. So, you know, people say, oh, I can't afford it, but this will be the only machine you buy. That's right. There will be no other thing that you will ever need. This is 72 um, pounds of cast iron. It yeah, is heavy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've had my King Max for three years, mm -hmm. and I haven't had to yeah. bring it in for anything. But if you do purchase a machine from here, they have their own service area, a whole building over there, right. um, where they service the machines and help you figure out what is going on with it, which I think is a great Right. is a great thing about purchasing uh, from this place as well. Um, I mean, that's what I tell people. I says, yeah, you can get something on the internet. Yeah. But I says, when you get it, can you set it up? Hey, yeah. If it comes broken, what are you going to do? Yeah. And when you have a problem with it, who's going to take Who care of call? it? You call the guy from New Jersey Who and you gonna fly call? out and take care of it? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, people ask me all the time. They send me pictures of machines on Amazon. Should I buy this one? I'm like, don't buy... Don't buy an industrial from Amazon. You need to buy it from a dealer because yes, you need support. You need support when purchasing something this big. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if you're doing it with somebody that knows what they're talking about, they're gonna ask first question they're gonna ask, what are you making? Right. I want to see your samples. Right. Uh, then I start knowing, oh, what kind of thread, what uh -huh. size needle. Yeah. All these little pieces come together and then I'm not selling you the wrong machine or telling them exactly. you exactly. Know. Which is what I did when I came in here, mm -hmm. I had somebody sit down with me and I explained to them what I was mm -hmm. wanting to make and what I was using. Right. And he went over the different machines and told me the, you know, cons and pros and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. to help me figure out which machine was right for me, right. which I think is great, Correct. which everybody should do when purchasing a machine like this. I think a phone call or something, well, um, you know, and I always tell people, I says, you're going to go buy a, like a tractor. You yeah. don't just go, I'm going to buy one on the internet. No. No, you want to go down to Massey Ferguson or whatever and make sure you're getting the right, right. thing for the right job. Uh-huh. You know? Um, so another question, do you ship? Yes, we do. To other... All over the United States. All yeah. over the United States. Yes, we do. Okay. And... Um, and Hawaii. And Hawaii. And Hawaii. And that's, Guam. And that, that's, many places we that's fabulous. I know people from like far away have ordered from you before because mm -hmm. they've told me. I think I've had like a South Carolina and mm -hmm. a, I don't know. So just because you're not here in Denver doesn't mean you can't purchase one from here either. Um, yeah, I mean, great machines. Great place. We have a, we have a program we've set up with uh, Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Okay. And they have an online tutorial they teach actually on oh, so, wow. for, so what we do is we have them set up by cohorts uh -huh. and they give me the number of cohorts in that cohort and then we I give them a quote on freight and all that and we ship the machine wherever they want in the United States so that's great mm -hmm. that's really great um anything else you want to like talk or no I'd love to help you guys with whatever you need um like I say let me know what you're making yeah. If I know that, yeah. then I can link in here what's the right equipment for that, right. uh, what you need to do, what threads, what needles, right. the whole thing, uh -huh. and work on it. I'm right now working on something with, for Lockheed Martin like that. Oh, wow. Big deal. And one for a company out of Nebraska does grain trucks. So those are huge. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's, wow. Please don't bring the cover here. It's 45 feet long. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, thank you You're for talking to us again, Jack, from Rouse Industrial. <laughs> and you'll probably be seeing more of us. So <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs>